Hey friends. So I just came off of a uh, piano teacher training session. That's the Thursday, the Thursday thing for about 18 weeks. We're in week seven, if you're following. But there was something that happened. It was kind of an interesting experience, both of my own, in terms of my own um, feelings as a teacher, as a student, and then as an observer. It was kind of, this is mirrored in all three of these experiences. And it's something that, it coalesced something that has also been percolating in me for the last you know, a couple of weeks, I'd say. I've talked about it a bit on this post. And basically, Madeline mentioned a quote at some point in response to uh, another student's, uh, another student talking about her experience. And she basically said that there was a time when she was trying to get in, Madeline is speaking now about her uh, a community that she wanted to be more involved in, but she felt like she kept somehow making missteps or, you know, there was some awkwardness there and she spoke to someone about it. And this very wise person said, it sounds like you have a passion for growth and that means being clumsy a lot of the time. And it crystallized and in a way it kind of expanded the, my sphere of thinking about what I've been speaking about for a couple of days and maybe even a couple of weeks now, you know, with, in terms of like recognizing the inherent frustration that I, and I, I use frustration. Whenever I use the word frustration, I always feel like I want to qualify it because it's, it feels like a loaded word. It feels like a word that denotes somehow not moving or not, or, or, or being at, at, at odds with an experience. But when I use the word frustration in the context of growth and in the context of, you know, p whether it's piano or any kind of like real deep inner work growth, what I, the way I use that term is the experience of having a pattern interrupted is inherently frustrating because our mind and our emotions are attached to that pattern. And it doesn't matter if it's a good habit or a bad habit doesn't matter if it's a highly effective habit or a highly ineffective habit, whether it's, it's not, it's not so much the quality of the pattern. It's the fact that we're interrupting it. We can interrupt patterns that are working wonderfully and that are highly effective. And that'll be frustrating. And we can interrupt patterns or habits that are totally ineffective, not working at all, but the experience of having them interrupted will be equally frustrating because from the point of view of our brain, our brain just sees these patterns as efficiencies. It sees, it doesn't necessarily evaluate from that kind of like neurological level. It's not necessarily going, this pattern works really well. Therefore, it should run smoothly. This pattern doesn't work well. Therefore, it's okay for it to be interrupted. It just has programs that it runs that it throws at the world in an attempt to to elicit effective behavior so it doesn't matter how good these habits are how bad they are interrupting them will be frustrating and so i talk about frustration i i, I use that word intentionally because i think it would be it would be sugarcoating it to pretend like you could do this process without experiencing frustration. I really think that it's important to, to, to acknowledge that the experience of doing that is, is one that there's an inherent, we have an attachment to a pattern. It's, that's gonna manifest. Now, if we're being conscious about the process, then that experience of frustration, which happens inevitably when we interrupt a pattern, is only one small component of the experience. It's not, a, it's, it by no means summarizes the experience it, and it doesn't even have to be the main event of the experience. It can really be kind of like a, a sideshow. But we should just know it's there because we wanna acknowledge it. We wanna be able to feel it. We don't wanna repress that frustration because if we repress the frustration, then it's likely 
that it's building up resistance to breaking down the pattern in a way that will manifest later. It's just kind of like, we're just saving up. We're just like, okay, we're right now, I'll ignore that I feel this way. But then later on, we're gonna be inclined to go back to that habit and alleviate the frustration. Whereas just experiencing the frustration and knowing that this is part of it, lets us be present to it and it lets us acknowledge it and honor it and at the same time not be ruled by it because we do actually want to break these habits and we want to build new ones and so this is part of the process but but all of the the kind of like the what the, the quote that Madeline gave kind of like put a larger context around this set of experiences because a lot of times what it feels like I mean, it's even the word I've been using I used this in, in a lesson the other day with a student. I think I mentioned this to Madeline. I mentioned it to, to my wife. I've used this word several times, clumsy. I just feel clumsy at the piano. You know, it's like I learned these new pieces, Chopin etudes, they're devilishly hard, some of them. And I feel like a klutz. I feel like I've, I feel like I've never learned how to play piano. I'm like, I don't know how to play piano. Why? I, 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 I thought I did. I spent a lot of years playing that instrument. Who knew? I don't know how to play it. You know, now I'm being a little bit tongue in cheek, but the fact is there are these, there's a, there's a level that really feels like a new level for me. And, and, and I, and I spend a lot of time feeling clumsy. So, but I know I have a passion for growth. You know, I know that that's where it's at for me. I mean, there's just nothing more, you know, as far as my personal experience goes, I'm not talking about like, you know, I, I, I love, oh my God, watching Annalise these days learn. She's at this age where she's just exploding with physical skills and cognitive skills, all this stuff. I mean, in a, in a single day, we'll wrestle with language. We'll wrestle with her body in gymnastics. We'll wrestle with her body in the water. She's just learning, she'll dance. We're going to music lessons. She'll, she's, she's work, the universe is kind of piling in and she just drinks it in. And she also has, just as I had and have, an aversion to feeling clumsy. Nobody likes to feel clumsy. We like to feel competent. We like to feel like we know, not, not just because our ego wants to be seen as being competent, which is generally the case, you know, right? We, we, we want to be, we, we want to be presented as competent to the world because that makes us feel good, but because it's actually also really disorienting to not feel competent. It feels dangerous. It feels not stable. We don't, it feels insecure. There's an insecurity in that experience of like, I, whew, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like a fool. And so for all these reasons, it's really key to make that link between growth a, a, a passion for growth, a desire to grow and learn, and clumsiness to let to let our to, to start to associate that feeling of clumsiness with the experience of learning, the ongoing experience of, de of development and learning. Because when we feel clumsy, it's like I was saying before. I don't know how to play piano. It turns out it feels like it. The, the, a momentary experience of clumsiness can make it feel like. Everything I've ever done is stupid. I don't know anything. I'm the wor I'm the most useless person in the world. Have you, has anybody ever had that experience? One moment of being clumsy, and all of a sudden, nothing in your life you've ever done well. You've done everything wrong. Everything in the whole entire world is falling apart. You're incompetent. I'm incompetent at being human. Can be our takeaway from a single kind of moment of real clumsy disorientation. Obviously, it's not true. We know it's not true. Even intellectually, we know it's not true, but it can feel really true in the moment. And so connecting that experience with 
ongoing learning. This is how. This over here, this kind of like really uncomfortable bit is how this part happens. Huge. If we can do that, and we can sit even in that moment of clumsiness and just kind of recall and remember and be a, be conscious, you know, put that put that air gap in between our in between our immediate experience and our and our awareness of the experience and see if we can just hold the experience with that kind of membrane of understanding and ultimately love for the process. We the, a love of learning means leaning into that clumsiness. So it's a really nice reminder today and it was a really beautiful learning experience. So with plenty of clumsiness involved. So that's what I got today, folks. Thanks for watching. Much love. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.